hello. In this video, we are going to demonstrate a scheme to encode English language sentences in DNA. We have a number of assumptions that we're going to use. The first is that we're going to use the standard DNA code, but with some exceptions. Number two, we're only going to show one strand of potentially double-stranded DNA. Three is the stop code is also going to work when necessary as the letter X. Four, we're going to have no junk DNA or intron. Number five is we're not going to need any promoters, at least at first. And six, um, no codons are going to be needed for spacing. In the following list, we're going to show the codons, the three letter codes, and the one letter code for the amino acids that that particular codon codes for. In the scheme, we're looking for the uh, one letter codes that we're going to use rather than the three letter codes. There is no amino acid whose one letter code is the letter B. Therefore, to be able to code for the letter B, we're going to use the fact that biochemists would use the symbol B to refer to either asparagine or aspartic acid. So we took a codon, GAT, that would normally code for aspartic acid and say, well, aspartic acid is asparagine or aspartic acid. So therefore, now we have a code on the codes for the letter B. We also note the fact in some organisms, the codon TAA codes for the amino acid selenocysteine, which has the one letter code of U, and similarly THE codes for the amino acid pyrolyzine, whose one letter code is O. The reason we did this is because uh, there is no other way to get the important valves of O and U into this system.
this slide summarizes all the possible DNA codons along with the one letter codes for the amino acids that they code for, at least within the system that we're showing here, this particular scheme. Here on this slide, we have an example of such a DNA sequence, which is shown in the multicolored format. And then below each codon, we have its English letter translation and emphasize the English part of it, that a section is given an underline to emphasize it. For the remainder of this video, we're going to explain in a little more detail some of the variations from the standard code. So for the code ATG, which codes for methionine, it can also be a start codon to tell uh, that the uh, translation and transcription of the protein is supposed to begin at that particular point. As we mentioned before, the GAT codon is ASX, so that's either asparagine or aspartic acid, just to give us the symbol, the letter B. Here we're using the codon TAA, the code for selenocysteine, which has the one letter code U. Normally, this codon is a stop sequence. We also have the codon. TAG for pyrolyzine, which has the one letter code of O, and TAG is also normally a stop sequence. So using these variant codons, we end up having um, codons that will code for 24 of the 26 English letters, excluding J and Z. And this isn't that big of a problem because those are the two least used letters in the English language, according to one source, or two of the three least common letters for another resource. Similarly, the use of the variant codon so that we could get pyrolyzine, which has the one letter code of O, was useful because O is the fourth most common letter or the fifth most common letter in the English language, and it's one of the five vowels. So I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.